Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of my replay casting. I am Annie, aka Android, and I am being joined by the lovely Ted Casts as my co-caster. How you doing, man? Thank you. I needed that confidence boost today. I love being called lovely. This is uh, going to be a pretty interesting game. I'm liking how the lineups are turning out so far. It's going to be one of those games where, you know, a whole lot of stuff's going to happen. No one's going to know what's going on, but we'll try to clear things up a bit. Absolutely. Again, this is going to be replay 22061533366. Sounds like a good replay to me. So without further ado, let's get into things and start introducing the teams on Mustache. We've got a Sand King going here towards this bottom rune. We've got Lockdown on the Oracle down bottom on this carry PA. We're going to have Blue in the mid lane. It's going to be the Shoveler on the mid silencer. And finally, up here at the top, Teal is going to be playing this Lardar. What about on the dire You're telling side? Me you didn't look at the names before uh, doing this game. You didn't put them into Google Translate. All right, I don't blame you. We're gonna have NNID on the Juggernaut with Pudge playing the Pudge. Uh, Mustache is gonna get stunned up by Boyodang on the Bank with Wind Ranger on the Wind Ranger, who is also getting stunned here. And finally, uh, OD on the OD. First blood. It's gonna go the way of the Oracle, but up top we do have a Cliff Slardar going one for one with the Pudge. The Silencer helping out might be exactly enough as what they need to get the kill, but the Fairy Fire consumed by the Pudge may end up saving his life. Slardar wants to go through, does not have enough mana for his Slytherin Crush. A last hit goes the way of the Slardar, so three for zero. Starting things off right here on the Radiant Foot. Who gets the Bounty Runes? It is gonna be a 1-1 one, one split. split. Yeah. So Slardar gets the Bounty Rune up top, but he also starts things off with a kill. That's going to make his laning time a little bit easier. Well, multiple fronts here because the PA also got a kill, which is incredibly important, on an assist too. And Shoveler got some intelligence from this. It's almost a perfect situation. Yeah, we might not have such a perfect situation here as Juggernaut is now magic immune because he's in that Blade Fury trying to chase down the Slardar. Slardar won't be able to go... Juggernaut won't be able to lock down the Slardar here. So Slardar, he's going to get back. He's going to use his self to get back to full HP. And the Shoveler going back to his uh, his position here. So oh, is there kill potential here in this top lane? We saw Juggernaut let go of everything that he needed to get a kill, but it still wasn't enough. Well, I mean, this is where you uh, you benefit from going the boots of speed on the Slardar as in the off lane. Like, you've got the support a silencer to back you up if you need to, because typically when you buy boots, you can't buy a whole bunch of either strength or regen items or either or so it's having that support is really making this greedy item pick up work you can see up until this point he's hit me nearly every single crush because he's been able to get in position and lock down the juggernaut i mean he's already going back to base or at least pulling a salve out to him this is hurting the jug's gold quite a bit and pudge is not a really great support either so it's almost like this off lane is going to do incredibly well all three lanes, I think, maybe mid being the only exception, seem to be set up pretty fantastically with Mustache supporting the PA on the bottom. Uh, his items, he also went for brown boots, a similar story for him. You know, get up for that stun, and you should be able to get it every time. Absolutely, that Burrow Strike is going to be key in terms of keeping that uh, Vengeful Spirit locked down. She's got the missile for some really nice stun and follow-up. I just have a big question here about Radiant's lanes. They can't afford to let OD free farm completely unchecked. There's just no Radiant mid. Yeah, I, you know, I'm worried about who would mid in this scenario. Like, they've, they've got Silencer? a try lane on bottom. Yeah, but he I went for the support first. Like, now he's got boots and a magic wand. If he goes mid, he gets blown up like every other hit. In fact, that's almost why I think they're a Ooh, speaking of blowing up, down bottom, do we do have that really nice play from the Sand King going in. Does end up getting that Burrow Strike into a Sandstorm, so with enough damage to get down the Vengeful Spirit, but they have to trade the Carry Phantom Assassin. She took too much tower aggro. She's back at the well. I don't think that trade's worth it. Of course, it's always nice for Mustache to pick up some assists, but you can't let your hard farmer die. Yeah, there wasn't really any way to save him there. Like, maybe if you go for Fate's Edict first on uh, on Lockdown, you can pop the Fate's Edict and then the Purifying Flames. For those who don't know, Fate's Edict makes you 100% magic immune. So when you cast Purifying Flames, it doesn't do the initial burst of damage. It only heals afterwards. So he's going for this um, Fortune's End and Purifying Flames because that one, you do the damage, but you don't do the heal. So it's kind of like... You know, you either go one or. You do the damage and not the heal, or you do the heal and not the damage. So He's going to be using I, that very offensively. 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I Mango guess would be the better way to put it. Sand King wants to go in. He has the mana for the Burrow Strike if he wants to go in. He's going to go into that Sandstorm form, so it's going to make it hard for the Vengeful Spirit to find him. She's just going to have to take some damage. Looks like Windrunner will get away with her life. Lockdown might end up going down here. He does have the Purifying Flames if he wants that brief nuke, but there's going to be the Burrow Strike again. Phantom Assassin, this time securing a kill on the Vengeful Spirit. She needs those early kills to stack up. It looks like she's going to start with Battle Fury. She has that Quelling Blade. I don't think you don't necessarily have to go into the Battle Fury when you pick up the Crawling Blade, but if she does go, I can agree with that decision. It's going to come down to one of those games where she has to outfarm the Jug, and if Jug's going for a Battle Fury, she has to. And of course, gets a kill on the Wind Ranger for some reason. Wind Ranger should really never let that happen. Boyadon's trying to get a counterplay out, but can't seem to get the uh, close of distance. So this could be a very good game to go greedy and go for that Battle Fury. The only downside is it kind of cuts your effectiveness in team fights for a short amount of time, but that doesn't last very long. The PA can farm incredibly quickly, and even the Battle Fury can tend to give her enough damage to maybe participate in early skirmishes. Absolutely. So now we've got Slardar here. He's trying to look for something. Pudge hasn't really found a really successful hook just yet. Slardar doesn't realize how close he is to that Pudge. He could actually just walk into the tree line and connect with a crush if he wanted to. But for now, just going to let Silencer farm up a little bit. He picks up a belt of strength, so Silencer's going to be going into those power treads that he's going to toggle to intelligence to get the most intelligence to his name possible. Yep, the intelligence and, I mean, the power attack speed from the power treads is really good, too. You've got such a, a right-dependent hero right here that I don't think he's going all in for the support build, even though he hasn't gone mid. Is like He's trying to get in the most out of the situation he's been put in, so... The treads will be great, however, you got the hook. All right, up top. I mean, there's damage being dealt on bottom, but here we've got the big dive. The Slardar goes in past the tower, is going to be taking tower shots. Pudge, another fairy fire, trying to get out alive. Pudge does fall. Slardar falls as well from the tower shots, but Slardar was there to get experience from the kill, so that's going to be the big factor. A very unfortunate factor of that, though, is that the Shoveler doesn't get the intelligence from that. So he misses out on quite a bit there by not being close enough to that kill. There was a bit of harass on the NNID, which is good for the amount of intelligence and damage he has already. But if he got that kill, he could probably just run at NNID right now and bring him down. But actually, it looks like that might still happen. Yeah, I mean, Slaughter's going in. He does have that crush. He's going to be getting the crush, and it looks like there's the plus two we need for Silencer. He's now sitting at plus four stolen intelligence that he gets to keep for the rest of the game. So that's only going to stack up and up and up. Yeah, interesting uh, lane rotations coming out from the Radiant right here. You're, they're sending the PA mid. I don't really agree with this one at all. If he only has one point in Blur, he's really not going to be able to stand up to the OD. The constant harass from the orbs with the maxed out Essence Aura means he's going to have constant mana. He will not ever run out and can continue just orb attacking the PA, which you can do without drawing aggro. If you go up and you cast the orb on the PA, the creeps don't end up aggroing you, and you don't end up screwing up the creep equilibrium. So it's, I mean, look at what he's doing right now. Just go after it. No punishment whatsoever. It's going to be tough for the PA to actually get most, maybe just uh, dagger spam, but even that is not really sustainable. Yeah, if we're looking at the overall last hits, OD is doubling up the Phantom Assassin. We do have a rotation in, though. Slardar goes in for a crush. I think OD is going to fall here. Goes the way of Slardar, and that's going to be really important. They control his tempo a little bit after he had such a free farming start. That's why you always buy boots and TPs. I mean, obviously, he didn't use a TP there. Now he's going to use a TP at bottom, but... If you ever wonder why boots and why teleportation scrolls are important, you should have it at every moment in time. This is why. Gonna go into the bottom lane now. Got a crush here connecting. Boyodong is gonna be stunned up, killed off by the slaughter. This slaughter is just putting in a bunch of work. Gets a double kill now and just gonna be clearing out the wave. Very fantastic playing from him. He's all over the map. He's exactly where he needs to be. We've got four Radiant Heroes here on the bottom, perhaps ready to push this tower. They've got it pinged out. They want to push their map advantage while they have it. Meanwhile, up top, Silencer. Oh no, it looks like he's going to be falling as Pudge. No mana for a hook, so we can't go in and finish him off, but I think the Rot Chase is enough. Juggernaut wrapping around, but Pudge just ticks him down very slowly. Meanwhile, down bottom, a nice Impale does catch out the Vengeful Spirit. They'd combo that with a Crush from the Slaughter to keep her locked down as long as possible, and that's enough time for Oracle just to dunk down the damage there with that Fortune's End. 
Yeah, I mean, both the supports got the kill, so not greatest thing to do. Typically, for those kind of early skirmishes, it's not worth it to just be in for the assist gold and tell, uh, experience anymore. You really want your carry to get the gold at that point. So, it didn't go his way, but the Radiant is being super aggressive right now. This is allowing Mustache to pretty much freely jungle. Uh, one of the great things about Sand King is while he does end up being a very powerful lane support, he can stack and farm jungle camps incredibly well, stacking of course by pulling them at the certain time that they just spawn again. And all this golden experience he gets from this, like he's gotten level three, uh, level six, sorry. He's getting very close to that blink dagger up top lane, we got a hook. We do have a hook now from the punch. It's going to be a global silence there, so no more spells coming out on the Dire. But again, one more right click from the Juggernaut is more than enough damage to finish him off. Juggernaut has to watch his creep aggro. He's silenced up right now. Now should pop his healing ward. That's going to do some help. Can he micro it around so he can get back into lane XP? Maybe not. Down bottom, Oracle going to be forced to pop the ult on himself. That means there's going to be no more damage done to him for now. And uh, yeah, the purifying flames will be more than enough to heal him up. Meanwhile, Slardar... He's dominating right now. He gets himself very low, but it's enough for him to pick the kill off again on the Outworld Devourer. Slaughter is 6, 1, and 2. What does he pick up now? Does he wait for his blink, or can he pick blink. up a luxury item in between? Nah, nah. You, if he does, I don't think you pick up a luxury item on an offlane Slaughter. You either want to grab the blink, or you want to grab the four staff, or you want to grab both. Um, if he does want to kind of go into a different direction, sometimes a medallion can offer a lot of potency in the team fight, especially when you've got Avenge on your team. Illusion. But I really do think he's going to want to go for that dagger. His movement speed is not going to be enough to continue to allow him to get these incredible initiations. You need the long range, immediate initiation from the Blink Crush. And if he does want to go Force, more power to him. It ends up being a more team fight oriented uh, movement than the Blink Dagger, but. Still, one of the two items is going to most definitely be his next item. But meanwhile on the PA, she's only got about a thousand gold on top of her phase and Akla. This timing for the amount of gold that she's got, it, it doesn't Radiant's seem like it's good it's enough. Attack. Obviously Ooh, at this point, what's okay. going on bottom? There was a rotation in from the Juggernaut, but that TP to get him into lane took out enough mana, so now he can no longer cast Omni Slash. Maybe a little bit of a miscalculation there. We are going to have some initiation up top there as Slardar goes in, gets stunned up before he can get a crush, but there's going to be a blink in. There's the crush. Smackdown crit from the Phantom Assassin. So she's now going to have a little bit more gold in her pocket. Hook comes through, does catch on the Slardar. Can he get out of this one alive? No. Pudge is now on a killing spree himself. Yeah, I, he really wishes he had that crush right there to get off. I mean, you get the crush off, Pudge dies, because you'll most likely have enough time to cast the Amplify damage on top of it, and then the PA just two shots your Pudge. I have a question. And, um, yeah. Why has OD not skilled Astral Imprisonment at level 9? Because he had a free lane. So he didn't need it at all? But, but like, once yeah. he got challenged in lane, wouldn't you think he'd pick up a value point? Uh, I mean, he didn't expect, he already was a 303, a 304 build by that point. So at, at that point, yeah, he definitely should have gone for a point in Astral. But if you're going for a purely free lane like that, then typically this is a, a build that doesn't get punished. But you can see right there, it definitely would have been useful. And I do recommend getting a value point in it always. But I can see his reasoning why he didn't. Won't say it's good reasoning, just saying that's probably it. All right, we've got Mustache positioned very aggressively here. Has the Blink Dagger. Maybe looking for that really nice Epicenter to go in and dish out some damage. Yeah, an Epicenter at this point and nearly one shot, or you know what I mean, be able to kill out the Wind Ranger at the amount of HP she's got. Top, though. Yeah, we've got Slaughter. Gonna be taking a dismember underneath the tower. I don't think he survives this. A couple more tower shots. No. Slaughter is tanky enough. He's gonna be taking a wave of terror. The magic missile finishes him off. So nice rotation from the Vengeful Spirit. There's a swap back, forcing PA to take a little bit more creep aggro. She's now trying to juke around the just trees. Fighting. Yeah, uh, phase boots are gonna be off cooldown. She wants to run. She wants to get out of here. There is enough mana for another stun if Vengeful Spirit can get in range. I think Phantom Assassin gets out of this one safely. Radiant he definitely would attack. have fought that one initially as uh, <laughs> bottom lane, the Wind Ranger will die through this incredible combo of Silencer and Oracle. I mean, that's just awful to go against, but 
Uh, interesting to note with that PA is that she got, she has the Morbid Mask. She could have fought, well, oh, oh. I saw that. Sanity's Eclipse is committed I, yeah. in the mid lane just to dunk down the Phantom Assassin, but that's a long cooldown, 150 nah, something seconds. It. Yeah, you get down the carry, but now OD is vulnerable as Slardar, he did TP in. Maybe he wanted to go in a little bit more aggressively. Doesn't have his Blink Dagger quite yet, so it can't do it at the moment, but... He can definitely go in once that blink is completed and one creep camper. So, I, I de uh, going back originally to that point I was making uh, oh, real quickly here. It's when you see the ma uh, magic missile going down like that, you really you can turn and fight, and you can probably win that fight too. Uh, so I'm not sure why she didn't try to fight, but oh, nope, she got away for the most part. She TP back to the tier one tower and ended up dying. So, if you're gonna if you're gonna go all out on escaping, you might as well TP back to base. Absolutely. So, speaking of item pickups and blink daggers, we do have a blink dagger on the OD. How do you feel about that versus a more traditional pickup, like maybe even the Atos, the Orchid, some more stats for himself? If it's 14 minutes into the game and you've got 2k gold and you need some way to be you know, across Ooh, the map hook and Hook in from the punch! They're yeah. gonna get, get him down with a dismember, they're gonna be able to lock down the PA for now. There is gonna be the ultimate from the Oracle, keeping him alive. They got the purifying flames there on the PA, is He's it enough alive. to keep him? No, he is going to no. pop. There was too much damage just out by the Dire, so it is going to catch up with him in the end. The heal is not strong enough. Theoretically, there. Oh, actually, we got the bottom lane. I don't think Wind Ranger dies here. He's going to get close, but uh, that Blink Crush was missed by the Slaughter. He's actually going to go for it again. Finds two with that. Is going to get the Wind Ranger. However, Pudge is there. Maybe could have continued fighting, but we'll play this one carefully. I got to give him credit for holding back and being patient. Um... I think there were a couple points I wanted to make, so I, I will go back to the one I remembered, which was the Blink Dagger on OD. If it's early, you've got the gold for it, and you want to fight constantly, then you do it. I mean, it's one of those items that's good on nearly everyone if you can get the gold, and allows you to be so much more mobile and uh, take advantage of your opponent's possibly poor positioning uh, much more often. So I really like it. There was one other point I think I was going to make, but I lost it in the midst of whatever just happened on bot, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in terms of item pickups now, we, we mentioned we have the blink on Sand King. He now has another almost 1,000 gold. Oracle's going to be taking care of the mechanism and the arcane boots. Does Sand King build a pair of arcane boots on his own? Uh, maybe. I mean, Greaves slash just plain arcanes is pretty good. You really don't build anything else in this hero, uh, to be honest, so... I could see him maybe going Tranks, but it's really just not worth it. I like the Arcanes better. Yep. Up top, looks like Phantom Assassin gonna be punishing the other little lady in the game. Going in, gets a nice crit there onto the Vengeful Spirit. So it's that's feeling really nice. Meanwhile, Juggernaut does get a kill on the Silencer. So he's gonna be feeling pretty good about that. He has a Mask of Madness. How do you feel about that compared to some of the other more traditional items we see on the Juggernaut? Mask of Madness is a, a very traditional item for the Juggernaut. If not a patch ago being uh, more popular, it's I think it's what Juggernaut back into the to the minds or the public eye uh, as an item. Now it doesn't give you the same movement speed anymore, but the phase boots takes up for that. The real thing about the Mask of Madness is it gives you farming speed comparable to the Battle Fury early on. That also allows you to fight a lot more effectively, so... Ooh, Blink in from the Slardar. Wanted to go in and be aggressive with the Crush, but a really nice timing there oh. on the Astral, but awesome epicenter there from Sand King into the, into the Sandstorm. Makes it easy for PA to Blink in and get a double kill. They bring down the Windrunner and the OD, two of the biggest targets on the Dire right now. Vengeful Spirit, she's in. She's gonna get a dagger right to the face. Pudge is here. This could be a magic missile here onto the Phantom Assassin as well. Global Silence committed, so no more spells for now. Sand King is so low, but he wants to go back in. He will blink! He will get an amazing uh, burrow strike, and they're going to secure the kill on the Pudge. It may end up costing the Sand King his life, but he's alive for now. They actually end up almost wiping the entire Dire team. The only survivor is the Juggernaut. I'm, uh, I have a couple of things I want to point out there. The first, that hook by Pudge was almost the play to save the game right there. The unfortunate part about it was he didn't have enough mana to cast his uh, his dismember immediately after, which allowed Sand King to burrow strike right back in to the Dire team and deal the damage he originally intended to do. So uh, that was very important. 
missed uh, play from the punch. I think he had enough magic wand charges to cast it and pop his dismember, but Radiant's it may have been control. just short. I, who am I to tell? It was a it was long ago, but another important thing about that mustache. Ooh, hold that thought. We've got another crush in. More blinks going down. It looks like Slardar not gonna be able to get what he wants. There's gonna be a Sanity's Eclipse, as there's another a fantastic hook here from the Pudge, locking down the Phantom Assassin. This time he's got the dismember. He takes her out of the party, and now we are gonna have the Juggernaut spinning, trying to chase down the Silencer and the Oracle. Oracle's still gonna be well alive. Mustache trying to get alive here. He is gonna get burned down by the rot of the Pudge, obviously doing the AoE of damage. Shoveler trying to get out here. Do they have the missile to break the TP? Not quite in time. They are gonna let the Oracle get back to base. The Shoveler, the last one, gonna be swapped in, but he gets an Invis rune at the perfect time. He's gonna be able to get away, but he's feeling real spooked. Well, the fight before that, Must had a great presence of mind for how much he could go in and then pull back before he died. Like, he, he guessed it perfectly uh, that he'd be able to survive. But that last fight was kind of weird. I almost feel like he could have survived but because the, the Pudge was being pretty... Uh, I won't say... I don't know. It's, it's, it wasn't the right play from Dutch, but he still right. got the kill. This time, Slaughter's going to be punished for his aggressive positioning. He went in for a blink. He will end up falling as the OD TP's in. There is going to be a TP in from the Juggernaut as well. They're going to secure the kill on the Shoveler, most likely. I think there's too much damage coming out from the Dire for him to live through this ultimate. Again, at the end of it, all the damage given to him during the duration will come through. Looks like Oracle, again, does end up falling. He sacrificed himself for the Juggernaut, but the Juggernaut didn't even live. We've got an Epicenter here from the Sand King. He's going to get Astral Imprisonment up, but the Epicenter continues to work as he's astral imprisonment so thank you od for keeping him safe during that epi mustache is gonna hop yeah. into that sandstorm to keep himself invisible right now juggernaut has the blade fury if he wants to do some aoe damage but sand king is just gonna try to blink to safety for now yeah you really can't do that to a sand king i mean if he can't immediately blink in the sandstorm because you've got aoe he can burrow strike to a different position then Sandstorm again, and then Blink away. So you cannot really catch up to a Sand King when all three of his spells are off cooldown. But I really like that Epicenter because he didn't exactly need his Blink to get it off. He waited on the high ground where the Dyer had no vision or very little limited vision on him. So it was a great position to get the Epicenter off. And then, of course, the Astral coming through to help his life. But uh, also, the Silencer, even though he was definitely dead, he got a kill during the time that he was kept alive by the False Promise. So he got more intelligence from that, which is incredible. Uh, the uh, Oracle also died, so it might not be as good, but still, it was a very, very well-played maneuver from the Orc Keep Silencer alive to get that final kill to scrape together some sort of Pyrrhic victory out of what seemed to be nothing. Absolutely, and we see Silencer, he's picking up a lot of blue items, and that means a lot of intelligence for him. Uh, he does have the extra staff of Wizardry. What's his next item here? Does he go for a Yules? This could just be an Atos. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to a Yules, but I feel like the Yules isn't the play here. Especially when you've got so many spells on your team, the Yules might end up doing more harm than good. Uh, the Atos would allow you to slow down someone like the OD or the Juggernaut. They're not super important because if you slow him down when he's Mask of Madness, you pretty much cripple him on belief. Uh, all puns intended right there. So it's a great, great item to have against the Juggernaut, against everyone on the side of the Dire team. So I imagine that's going to be his plan. Windwinter walked onto the wrong side of the tracks there, immediately punished. The rest of the Dire's here to look, but Mustache has that epi in eight seconds, wants to try to hold out for that. There is going to be a blink in into the Sandstorm. They are going to do the global silence, so no more spells for the Dire right now. OD is going to be the target of most of the damage, going in, splashing him down. Phantom Assassin doing a great job, going with the team, getting exactly what she needs. She's going to be building that Battle Fury, and she'll have it very soon. Yeah, she went back for the Battle Fury, which is surprising. I think she saw that the Juggernaut wasn't going to be rushing for his. So whether it was a conscious decision or not, not going for that rush Battle Fury. Oh, oh, oh. there's an ultimate from the Sand King used to get the Pudge down, and the kill goes the way of the Silencer, so certainly worth 20 stolen intelligence. That's going to add up there as he's got 33 stats and 74 base int. He's a, he's a very smart man right now. Yeah, he is incredibly smart. And, I mean, it's he has gone for the second Staff of Wizardry, so this most definitely is going to be the Atos. But I'm loving Mustache's timing right now. Uh, you saw when the Pudge was getting the Dismember off, he waited for the Dismember, first of all, before he cast the Stun, so as not to let that remain off cooldown just in case. A brilliant play from him. But also, that Epicenter right there was uh, 
well timed, and even though it was on a solo target, it's not a bad thing. To Ooh, have initiation like here, Phantom something. Assassin blinking in. There is going to be a really nice impale or burrow strike there yeah. from the Sand King into the Sandstorm. So much damage being put out. He will be hooked. He might end up dying from this. In fact, yeah, it looks like he's going to go down. We have an Omni Slash as well. It's doing a lot of damage to the Radiant Hero. Sanity's Eclipse is the nuke that they need now. Silencer trying to get himself away. He has the Force Staff slipping out of the Dire's grasp for now. The hooks off the mark. He's trying to juke around the trees. The movement speed from the Jug is so much. And finally, Od with that Blink Dagger goes in and gets one last right click only oracle left he tps back to base but the rest of his team is dead dire do a fantastic job holding there yep if you can buy a blink uh pre 15 minutes you should do it i i firmly stand by that okay there are some exceptions to that but for someone like od yeah he is a snowball hero through and through get that blink dagger and you can see i have situations like that just make it so worth it it's already paid for itself right now he's gonna have a bkb very soon which i mean is Radiant's good to a certain extent to the radiance lineup obviously Radiant's you want to be sure that the pa can't just jump on you when you can't get stunned out uh, so I would recommend them getting that, though I think he needs to get another intelligence item very Ooh, soon. Really nice blink in. They get nice the crush play. from the starter, but a hook from the Pudge keeps the uh, keeps everyone safe for now. Pudge is going to be taking that uh, stun there. He's going to be taking crush up. There is going to be the Sand King going in with that burrow strike once again, securing himself another kill. The Sand King is playing out of his mind. He's 2, 1, 2, 15 there. So 15 assists, making sure his team gets the kills that they need to stay ahead right now. Yeah, his positioning was sublime too, coming in from the jungle to get the perfect positioning for that follow-up stun. They, they've really got the just number at this point. Pudge being a hero that kind of has to remain off the map to constantly strike fear into the enemy team is now just being caught out with his pants down every which direction. <laughs> and him being dead is like the go for Radiant to just be super aggressive to take control of the Dyer's side of the map and they're going to exploit this a bit by going after the Roshan. You can see Mustache has positioned himself right on top of the cliff so that if uh, one, he can see if anyone's coming in, but two, if he needs to get the perfect positioning for a good epicenter, this will set it up. So they're going to go up and defend their top two one in the meantime after getting that Roshan, but a brilliant play from them further in their lead. They still have Vision of the Vengeful Spirit at this point. I don't know if she can juke herself away. She does not have a TP. She picks one up from the shop right now, but I think it's time for her to get punished. She's going to take some Purifying Flame, so she's getting a little bit of heal, but the Oracle is still able to secure the kill from that. Nice, easy pick off there. The tower stays safe. Now, Mustache could be in a little bit of trouble. There's going to be a Juggernaut walking into his jungle. Hopefully, they don't have a unfavorable meetup. Uh, I, I don't know. I think the Juggernaut is going to be just fine right now. There's no one really to punish his movement. I kind of worries me that just close by, though, because Pudge is tending to be bad luck. But uh, we'll have to see if he ends up being a problem. The Battle Fury did get completed. 26 minutes is probably not the best time for a Battle Fury um, when all you fought was a Helm of the Dominator, Akala, and Phase Boots. But it's, it's not terrible. I can only say there are worse times. Typically, you want to get that trifecta, or that quad, I guess, item, by 18 to 20 minutes at the latest. But uh, whatever the case, having the Battle Fury now will give him some wave clear, give him some push, and give him some desperately needed mage, which I guess isn't that desperate with the phase boost and the helm. Still, though, any damage is wealth damage for a PA. All right, looks like the mid lane is going to be the target of initiation. They've got the OD there to start things off. The crush is off the mark as there's a defensive blink back underneath the tower. Phantom Assassin goes in, gets the dagger, gets the blink here onto Windrunner. She tries to force staff herself away. She's not successful. The Phantom Assassin getting hooked in very far. I think she pays the ultimate price. There's an Omni Slash being dropped on just her. Looks like Oracle trying to do what he can to get the Juggernaut low. They are going to pop the Aegis here on the Slardar. We have a nice epicenter doing a little bit of damage to the dire heroes. OD, though, he's got his BKB. He's huge. Must trying to live through this just in a sandstorm form is going to drop there as the Sanity's Eclipse is used. Uh, don't let much hook you, number one. Number two, why do they give the Aegis to Slardar? I think Slardar was going in and making the plays and diving deep. I would have preferred to see it on uh, Phantom Assassin, but I yeah. think, considering it's just the first Aegis, I don't think it's going to have a huge negative impact. Well, I mean, that it, was a, it did have a, was huge, a huge negative impact. Yeah, but I think in, I mean, in the, theory, the idea was to give it to Slardar so we can continue to go in very aggressively with those very yeah. awesome deep range blink crushes. 
Uh, he just unfortunately got hooked into a bad position and died twice. I don't know. I definitely think that... Because PA t does the same exact thing. PA and Slaughter operate on a very similar basis. They both go in very, very deep just to get their damage off because, I mean, they're melee units with a... as their primary initiator. Oh, what? oh wow, that was interesting of an initiation. <laughs> All right. But they're not going to get anything out of it. Um, but the PA goes in deep. It's, it's the innate problem with the hero is that she can be very squishy because of that. So you got to give the Blink Dagger to her. I, I don't think the Slardar was the, the play there. I don't think it was... <laughs> He said Blink uh, Dagger. Yeah, the Aegis. <laughs> My god, too much division. I really hope she doesn't get a Aegis Blink Dagger. I don't think that'd be a smart build. Blink and slam and PA. <laughs> well, she's got one built in, but we'll see what item she picks up next. She's got almost 800, now more than 800 gold in the bank. She's going to be building up the BKB, but after that, she has a pretty big luxury of what she wants to pick up. Typically, you want to go for the Basher at that point because people can just run away. Like, most notably, the OD can just run away. His team four staffs, his movement speed is pretty good with that drums uh, completed on him. So he'll not be threatened at all from the PA. Getting getting something that'll help her keep the OD down would be perfect. So I definitely think the Basher or Abyssal afterwards would be the smart move. But the BKB is necessary. It is all too necessary. Unfortunately... You might start to lose quite a bit through the Juggernaut if um, if she's not able to do anything with this BKB in the first fight. Like a damage item or a damage item that offer, also offers some utility is going to be the most important thing for her. And if she can't end up farming something like that, then this PA is going to end up being very underwhelming. I completely agree. Meanwhile, mid lane, we've got Mustache pushed up very aggressively. The hook from the Pudge is not long enough to punish him here, but he's got to watch his positioning as there's five very hungry dire heroes. Right now, it feels like in the game, there's just kind of a loss of momentum. Looking at the overall yes. net worth and XP chart, we're pretty much at zero. XP has been all over the place here, but not swelling up huge in either team's favor. We've hit an interesting point in the game where it doesn't seem like either team has a real solid game plan. Radiance. Oh, exactly well, that's a game plan. Us. We've got a swap in. They're trying to keep oh. the Oracle alive. They've got all the damage here. They're going to be blinking in. The OD wants to get Oracle down. Can Oracle survive this? Was full health. Now is half health after the ultimate, but that ultimate's down for another 50 seconds. I think they get the shackle. They get one more hit. OD is down, and that means Outworld Devourer is feeling real good. Picks up a Hyperstone. Is that going to be an AC or a Moonshard? Ah, uh, I'm not entirely sure. Really, both of them are good items. I think the AC might be a little bit more uh, for someone else. I think it's better on someone like Ventral Spirit or the Juggernaut. Definitely not as someone like a Wind Ranger. But the Moon Shard, I feel, is a little bit better here. And the reasoning is the attack speed it gives is too damn good to pass up. You really want to be able to just go after someone and steal all of their intelligence with every attack comes five more intelligence that works towards your ultimate. So I definitely think the Moonshard is going to be the play here. Oh, mustache. If you're going AC first. Oh. Really, really good um. reflexes from them. He immediately gets scared, sees that the OD had popped into lane, pops the Sandstorm, so OD can't find him because no one on the Dire is carrying vision here for the Sand King. That's been such a nuisance in these teamfights. Oh yeah, that's, that's a major point in this game that I, I feel like haven't brought up just yet. The lack of detection is... Pretty disturbing on the radiant side. I don't think I've seen a, a single sentry or dust picked up, not to mention a gem, but there's been nothing from them. And you really need that against Sand King. We've seen it a couple of times where he's been able to get away with the Sandstorm. You have a dust, this game is not nearly as hard for them. But it looks like the initiation is going to come through. Mustache is in a fantastic position to start this one off, but Lockdown reveals a bit too early. Yeah, he's going to be continuing to go and takes a magic missile, so he's stunned up for now. There is also going to be a shackle. I think he might die before he can get anything real off. He hops into that form of the uh, sandstorm to keep himself invisible for now. Slaughter going in, the BKB doing work. He gets hooked in by the Pudge. Pudge gets the dismember off, so now there is going to be a blink in. There's the epicenter that we wanted! Fantastic burrow strike from him as well. So that is how you play Sand. He goes and he locks all the dire heroes down that were in a clump together. He's going to stay alive there courtesy of the Oracle pur Purifying Flames. He's feeling real good now, and the Oracle also does have those Guardian Greaves as well that he popped during that last fight. 
I was fantastic. Ishins is definitely a virtue when it comes to Dota. Waited for the perfect time to get that epicenter off, and it was it was well worth it. Not to mention the OD going down as early as he did in that fight. I mean, when you've got PA and Slardar whacking at you, you it, it, it kind of screws up your game plan a little bit. World of Our had to have been playing so much further back, but... Uh, with a BKB, I mean, it's not hard to avoid the blink initiation from the Sardar, but he just was not able to do it and got completely and utterly crushed. So Radiant are going in here. There's going to be a swap back from Mustache. If he comes out of that alive, he's going to be able to turn this. They are going to do a lot of damage. Silencer actually gets the pick off on Vengeful Spirit. For now, everyone on the Radiant's going to live. They might be a little bit unhealthy. In fact, maybe... Now, PA wants to back out with his life. There's going to be a nice BKB to OD, but Phantom Assassin shows off her own BKB. There's a nice crush here. There's just more and more damage coming out. They are going to get the kill there on the Juggernaut. That's huge. Pudge is in, but he might be in too deep. OD trying to get down the Silencer. The Silencer does fall, and now it looks like Stardar might be out of luck too, but goes and gets a nice first hit bash there onto the Outworld Devourer. Triple kill as PA dives the Windrunner deep into the base, so all of Radiant live except for the Silencer, and they get a wipe on the Dire. Is this the window that Radiant needs? to run away with this game? 100%. That was a systematic destruction of everything that the Dire held near and dear to their hearts. I mean, what do you do to come back from something? There were many things they did wrong, but the biggest one was that when you've got high ground advantage and you TP in and then you go behind them onto the low ground, you're setting yourself up for a lost fight. Like, they need to keep the high ground advantage to continue to be in the, uh, in the lead as off the PA should die here, though. The False Promise is going to help out quite a bit. She'll turn around, maybe heal herself up enough to stay alive. The tower damage constantly coming through, but she's able to break even barely. And that, I mean, that's definitely not what you want for the Alphabat fight. As you might also get the Wind Ranger. The Wind Run out, though, is going to help out quite a bit. But, yeah, you, you got to keep the positioning advantage. Because what happened, the OD and the Pudge both went onto the low ground while everyone on the Radiant was pretty much positioned on the high and. They were able to just turn around, bring him down, and then continue to go for what mattered, which was the rat, so. Sardar maybe getting a little bit too aggressive. It is going to take the Pudge Dismember to get him down, and now PA going in with that BKB, critting everyone up, gets the kill on the Wind Ranger, diving the Pudge even into the Dire Well, trying to do what she can. Going to be taking out those Jug Illusions, and now there's a missed hook from the Pudge. PA trying to man fight a BKB to OD, now man fighting a Juggernaut as well. I think she's in over her head here. She gives away a yep. mega kill streak. That's 936 gold going right in Juggernaut's pockets. That's an unnecessary fight for the Radiant. There was... An, it, I, I don't know if the PA... Like, she's got Cleave, so there were a couple instances where she chased someone when there was a target she could have cleaved off of to get the kill instead. So, perhaps a little bit more mindful of the fact that her right-click does a splash, or I guess the cleave, because splash is ranged. Um, her right-click has an AoE, would be the better way to put it. She's got to be a little bit more mindful of that fact because it's going to help her get kills in the long run. Situations like that are really important examples. So uh, she ends up giving up her life because she dove a little bit too far. So in the end, it doesn't really matter. You don't want to dive that far at any point in the game. But uh, just be very careful and make sure you remember what your item build is so that you can exploit situations like that. As uh, Is that going to be a relic pickup? No, that's a Reaver. She is going to be going for that Satanic first of all, and not sure I agree with that. I think the Basher would be a whole lot better here, but the Satanic has its merits, especially being able to dive a little bit further in and get an incredible amount of lifesteal per right-click to mean you're nearly unkillable. Though I would like the Abyssal Blade more, uh, this definitely is an all-right item to get. Still, I think her timings are a little bit late, but they're better than they were. Uh, 37 minutes for the Satanic is not too terrible. Yeah, and I mean, of course, that comes down to the Battle Fury just being able to accelerate her farm. Oh, uh, it's going to make it yeah. easier and faster for her to get what she needs. There's some more item pickums here coming out, specifically on the supports. Uh, Vengeful Spirit does pick up an S and Y. I think that's really, really greedy. Yeah. She's trying to play herself like a carry, but she needs to let Juggernaut have all the available farm. If this Venge had instead gone for Medallion of Courage and uh, of Vladimir's offering with this item, with this gold to use on this S and Y, I don't think the the Radiant or the Dire would be losing. I honestly think those couple of items would completely turn the tide of this game. I mean, you, you look at the amount of damage she buffs with the Venge's aura alone is pretty ridiculous. Having a thirty six percent damage bonus 
It's unheard of, especially when you get to the later parts of the game. You're looking at heroes that can get an excess of 100 to 150 bonus damage just from that spell alone. You add the 15% of the Vladimir's on top of it, and, I mean, you're looking at an unkillable amount of buffs that go on. So, unfortunate that she is going for this very greedy build because she could single-handedly help her team. Oh, we got PA diving deep. There's a global silence here, so there's going to be no Omni Slash. There's a nice crush. There's a nice epicenter going in. The Sand King is an animal. Going to be taking a magic missile here. He might have to pop into that sandstorm form to make himself uh, invisible. Going in. is going to get dunked by the Sand King's Eclipse. Doesn't care if you're invisible or not. Oracle trying to do his best to lock down the punch. He's got the blade mail, though, so going to be returning a lot of the damage coming into him. He goes in with a dismember. It's enough to take down the PA. Maybe, just maybe, no. No, PA lives for now. She takes out the pudge. She's blinking into creeps, healing herself up with the lifesteal from the satanic. Going in, maybe wanting to take on the outworld devour as well. He can't fall here. He's going to get a toast up, and in fact, he will die. I think this is it. As a Wind Ranger, she's going in. She's going to be using her ultimate there, the Focus Fire, but PA can go in and just crit her to death. She's trying to run away. She is very uh, hard to hit, courtesy of the evasion from the Wind Run, but man, I think Dire. Uh, they got told off right there, and Radiant are like, alright, just let us take this Rax. Stop trying to fight it. It's gonna happen. OD did it again. He blinked right behind everyone on the Radiant side, and if it was earlier in the game and you had more advantage, that'd be the play, because they couldn't kill you. But the fact that you're pretty much... Okay, well, we're gonna go die. You're pretty much bingo. The kill, because if you pop a BKB, guess what? The PA cannot blink to you. The Slaughter cannot do a lot to you. He can still bash you, but it's a lot harder for the Slaughter to do anything. So you don't blink to them, because then they just turn on you and they kill you. You've got to stay behind your team and fight. I almost imagine your position would be better like right next to someone like the Pudge, because he can dismember and then you can continuously get damage off, but... The oh, position no. of the dire has just been terrible. Juggernaut went in, couldn't even take a kill under his own tier 4 towers. He's just going to get slapped down by the Phantom Assassin, who's too big. She's going to get swapped back into the base, stunned up, so she may end up falling, but courtesy That's the satanic. Oracle, she's alive for now. And yeah, that Satanic going to be healing her up a heck of a lot. My goodness, the Cleave is doing so well. And I think, yeah, Phantom Assassin is going to pop here. She just can't take that much fountain damage, but she's able to get out. Uh, we've got Oracle here ready to uh, help the ally. Uh, help Phantom Assassin blink to an ally to get out of the well safely. It's now time for the Ancient to go down. Look at this overwhelming spike in net worth. We are now at 25,000 net worth, which means uh, Radiant, they just got 25,000 more gold split up amongst their heroes in the Dire. That means more items, and that means an easier time pushing and winning the game, which is what it came down to. Uh, I, my vote would be positioning and be in that game. Honestly, it, it came. There were so many fights that could have gone the other way, uh, if people had been in a different spot. Yeah, Another think... thing here, the itemization from the dire. There was a huge yeah. missed opportunity. Someone pointed out a mechanism. It's because no one wanted to build really? support. I mean, Vengeful Spirit ended up building first big item yeah. S and Y, and Windrunner, she didn't even get around to building an Agadim Scepter, which I think would have helped her out a lot. Instead, she's forced to oh. go for the four staff and constant warding. She just didn't get what she wanted, and. The dire, I mean, the carries can only get as big as the support they're given, and I mean, they just got nothing. Yeah, it, it's this vengeful spirit build is all right in some scenarios. The most notable being if you're already super far ahead, but they were never really at point. Radiant did a pretty good job at keeping it even. Uh, the PA was on top of things most of the time, but you got to give a lot of credit to that Slardar, too. He constantly held on to a TP scroll, got those boots up very early on, and was able to just take part in every single fight. I mean, his 16 assists doesn't give the full story. I think for the first 20 minutes of the game, he probably was part of, if not all, then 80% of the kills. Um, huge shout-out to the PA, though, because the amount of kills she participated in is incredible and that's the sign of a really good carry whereas juggernaut he bit went for a sort of fuzzy farming fighting style but he really didn't make use of either style he wasn't farming very well and his fighting was incredibly lackluster so i think the itemizations and the positioning are really what dire lost out completely on because radiant beautiful their positioning nearly every single time was beautiful and i gotta say they they played they deserved this game absolutely so i hope you enjoyed this replay cast uh my co-caster of course was the lovely chicago ted where can we find you 
Yeah, if you want to you give me a little bit of a shout out, go ahead on to uh, Twitter. Search me up at TedCast and uh, shoot me a note. Be happy to see you. All right. Thanks for joining in, man. Uh, yeah, I've been your caster, Annie, aka Android, and I hope you enjoyed yourself. Feel free to leave any feedback that you've got. Uh, always looking to improve. And if you've got a replay of your own that you'd like to submit, feel free to submit to me at anniecasts at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much, and I will catch you all next time.